The soils in the western catchment are fairly hard cap. Um, studies have shown that about 70% of all rainfall just runs off the, these soils. So water infiltration is pretty low and um, as a result ground cover is pretty low in some spots. It would be great to, to go back and see what it was really like, but from reading explorers journals and other bits and pieces, um, you know, C.W. Bean's book on the wool track, um, you can get an idea that in, this country wasn't dominated by an INS and bare ground. It was covered with print, native perennials, it had good good cover. Um, they talk about losing losing kids in the in the in the grass. There was that you know that much grass. It was up to the waist of horse horses. Um, the horses used to sink to their feet blocks in the soil. It was that soft and spongy. Um, you ride around now, you've you got to drive, try and drive a crowbar into it. The main types of erosion that occur in the western catchment are um, sheet erosion, where just layers of soil are just washed down the slope. You have um, gully erosion, where water's concentrated and um, eats out a gully. And then you have scalds, which are typically called clay pans, where um, the topsoil has been blown away over time. Where we find sheet erosion, that's typically on um, the slopes, the gentle slopes that you find. And to treat that, we, we generally look at contour furrowing, where there's a, a series of banks um, surveyed on the contour and built on the contour um, to slow down the water and just improve the water infiltration. Where you find gully or real erosion, um, we use water spreading banks there. And water spreading banks take the water out of that gully and spread it over the country, over a, a front of a couple hundred metres and that also slows the water down, increases water infiltration, um, improves ground cover. So where you have clay pans or scalds, we um, build water ponds on, on those and those banks just keep the water on the clay pan long enough to increase the um, germination of um, annual species and then that progresses to more perennial species and the, the clay pan eventually becomes reclaimed and grows really good ground cover. Water spreading for us on Dijo has enabled us to see the results of when the water, instead of rushing across the, the, the paddocks, it slowed down and spreads out and it's allowing the natural grasses to come back on. We've, we've seen that it has also the woody weed effect. If we can keep on top of that, I think the native grasses will actually choke it out. But without the water spreading banks there, we wouldn't have the natural grasses coming back and that's what we've achieved. Before the water spreading banks were put in, it was very scoured out country. We'd cleared it and uh, cultivated it, and we were, I, I was very worried about what, how, how to get the native grasses back on it. And um, the CMA, they sort of come up with um, trying these water spreading banks, so I'm, I'm very happy with it, yeah. Another cause of erosion out here fence lines, tracks, roads, and that happens when the natural water flow is diverted because of windrows or just the, the track is below ground level and it concentrates the water and the water gushes down these tracks or fence lines and just eats it out and it causes gullies. To um, lessen the impact of this type of erosion, it's important to minimise windrows, um, but also to help reinstate the natural water flow, we put banks across the tracks, fences. So when putting these banks across tracks and fence lines, they can have large approaches, so traffic doesn't have to slow down too much and you can build the fence over these banks. Yeah, all, all these rehabilitation works, they, they need careful surveying um, and marking out on the ground. Um, you, you just can't pick the fall of the land with your eye and we're working in tolerances of a few centimetres over um, 100 metres and if you don't get it right you can cause a disaster, you can actually create gullies and that's happened in the past. So it's very important to um, survey properly and construct and build these banks correctly as well to the right dimensions. But with all the rehabilitation techniques the idea is that you're rehydrating the landscape, um, the erosion features just drain the landscape away and the water just doesn't stay on the land long enough to do what it's supposed to do and that's grow ground cover. We had a 
a fall of about 25 mil and that would rained over the house. Instead of guttering and washing away all the topsoil and everything with it, with the volume of water that's coming down, the water spreading banks have slowed that, that pressure and it will trickle across the road for all of that day and it's not just gone, it's not just disappeared and instead of going down a narrow water line it's actually spreading out to twice to maybe four or five times its, its um, width. Yeah well, a lot of our native grasses have come back that I didn't think had ever come back on this country. It is a, a dual outcome, it's a win-win situation where the landholders definitely have a productivity gain um, but there's also the biodiversity um, improvements of just um, ground cover, there's the um, perennial ground covers and then there's the shrub species um, that come back. It's not stopping it, it's not banking it up, it's just slowing it down.